it's that time again. I'm in my office, my engine. I don't always know what I'm going through, but I've learned to trust in the Lord with all my heart, and I've learned how to persevere in that scripture, in that verse. It's become a habit, a routine, a power, an automatic flow of thinking. Before I would analyze and process many multiple things that would take me out of the circumference and sacredness of that oracle, of that wisdom found in the word of God, the location of God, the presence of God, the power of God, the throne of God. So I wouldn't really be in the circumference and circulate, but through so many stages of going through darkness and over, and I believe experience is one of the most important, potent, tools and keys we possess as ministers of the truth and I've been learning I've been learning from these apostles I've been learning from prophets I've been learning from the Bible I've been learning from nature I've been learning from Jesus Christ and I've just been learning from the Holy Spirit and I just want to come here today and share everything I've been go man these past three months of my life have been so intense I've been going I've been dealing with a Jezebel spirit I've been dealing with new demons I've been overcoming and God been testing me and I've been le I've learned how to sacrifice I I'm more acquainted with the word the actual power of God's word not just reading the Bible reading the Bible the actual power the meaning of God's word the rhema and I'm coming to that place the Lord told me my time at my current job has ended so I'm looking and the Holy Spirit is leading me and I just feel this opening. I feel darkness, but I feel this opening. And because of the registration of knowing and the experience that I carry, I know how to go through the darkness, not worry about the darkness. You know how many times in your life you go through something and you begin to worry about it. Did I do something wrong? Is it my fault? Maybe this isn't the righteousness of God. Maybe, maybe, maybe wrong, wrong. But you get to a point where that no longer happens. You just learn how to go through it. You just know you, demons come and you just learn how to rip through them. You immediately through spiritual warfare and practice, you don't negotiate with devils. You don't worry about, well, the devil said this. So you don't, you don't, you don't even contemplate what Satan is saying. You just rip through Satan. You just rip through demonic beasts. You just rip through principalities. I got witches and warlocks that the devil was sent to my job. And I said, bring every one of your witches and warlocks and they're going to fall on their face. And I love my job because my job is so fast paced. What I've gained in that job, the security I've gained, the revelation that I've gained, the power that I've gained, the breakthrough in Christ that I've gained at that job by being in the place in obedience and staying there and not escaping it. You know how many times God has you in a place he wants you to stay and all the wealth of heaven, all the riches of heaven, all the things God is trying to show you is there, but you're trying to escape because you think there is a greater greatness out the obedience of God, out being in the position and place, the spirit spirit wants you to be in. Well, I could have this, I could do that. And then it just only disacquaints you with the union of Christ and it makes you more miserable. Now you're more worried. Now you're trying more harder to manage five jobs at one time. Now you're trying and it just depletes you, defeats you, and it actually decreases you. Okay. We're talking about spiritual things here and I'm done. I'm done with the flesh. I'm done with the carnal world. I've spent so, you know, I love the process of the Holy Spirit. When I gave my life to Jesus, everything became opposite. I started realizing how bland and how death life is without Christ and how how everything in this earth that we want, that we love so much, that we chase all this vanity, it's depleting, it's miserable, there's no satisfaction. That's why we're always wondering and wondering and wondering and wanting more and more and more. We can never find satisfaction. We gotta go have sex over here, have sex over here. We gotta stay on drugs because people have not found Jesus, okay? And just because you go to church don't mean you found God. Just because you clap your hands and you say you believe don't mean you walking in the light of Christ. You live this thing out. And throughout all this time of your life, it unfolds, it expresses, it manifests. The robe and the majesty of God comes upon you. 
greater layers of God's presence begins to saturate you. When you walk into an atmosphere, a higher level of wealth, a higher archangel, higher power, higher revelation is upon you. So you go into a greater vicinity, a greater extension. You begin to have reach in the land and the kingdom and the heaven and the possession and the power and the purpose. You begin, my seeing is increasing. I'm, my sensitivity to the spirit realm is increasing. I can, I can detect hidden emotions inside of people at a much deeper rate and it's more intense. But I'm able as a, as a healer in Christ, I'm able to absorb that pain, receive that darkness and destroy it. I had a vision the other day and I was just seeing people inside my spirit. And this is the wealth that God was trying to show me. You don't think in terms of making money and getting a higher pay. That's okay. But I want you to think in terms of souls, of spirits entering into you and being set free. Their chains being broken. Them being delivered from the bondage of darkness. Them being broken free. Just, I started seeing all these people's faces inside my spirit as a carrier of their souls, as an intercessor, as a prayer warrior, as a deliverer, as a minister of the truth of this gospel. Just seeing them in my spirit, seeing them in my soul and carrying them through the darkness, through the dungeon, out that cave, out that evil, out that chain. And I'm really, really, really excited. But this is what I'm more excited about. I can talk about all these good things, powerful, hallelujah, what he's saying. But when I come here, the realm of understanding of my current situation comes upon me. When I come here, see, this is a realm we're in right now. I've, I've discovered lately the Holy Spirit's been teaching me everything in life is a realm. So when you grow in your knowledge and when you grow in your wisdom, the realm that you exist and walk in and habitate in and dwell in and experience becomes more potent it becomes more uh, you just it just becomes more and more and more and then and then instead of just a six degree it becomes a 20 degree instead of just a river it becomes 75 waterfalls with many rivers and this is what happens so i love the fact of spiritual growth because it's eternal growth and you don't wait to go to heaven and die to experience it the kingdom of heaven and the holy ghost and jesus christ is within so we experience that within and i love the increase i love the increase but in my life, the spirit has shredded me, shredded me here. Like God would send me to a territory, it would be filled with darkness, and I would have to understand for the light to shine in that darkness. Then when I spoke the word of truth, according to that understanding, that vicinity became filled with the light. Then God began to possess that land and the currents of that land, the economy of that land, and what was ever to be produced, it gave a place for people to come into a light where they were able to understand their destiny where the altar of god was realized the place of jacob the ladder of jacob arose they begin having visions and encounters so your prayer and your dedication and your fasting it can open the gates of heaven for so many people people that don't even really know god it can open the gates and just your possession and your presence you can you remember you carry a presence in a lower level, you think you have to do all these things to activate God, but you carry a presence. So the more you become acquainted with Jesus, the master, which doesn't, which withdraws from trying to make himself fit. See, God, see, Jesus ain't like a man. Jesus, when he was on earth, he, well, he, 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 ain't trying, he wasn't trying to make himself famous. He withdrew from trying to enter the fame of man. He withdrew from trying to enter the promotion of man. That's why he, would, he, had, he had this spirit called the withdrawing spirit. He would withdraw, Jesus would withdraw himself from the crowd of man, from the crowd of human fame, from the crowd of human success. He would withdraw and unite back with the Father because that's who he was. So you don't just go to what you're gonna get, but if you never remain in who you are, before you go purchase a Maserati and a Bentley and a mansion and you go chase worldly success, find out who you are. And that's going, it's, you know, self-discovery is a dark, dark process. If you think it's just, oh, well, you, I, it's going to be all light. Yeah, in Christ, it is all light. But yo, you're going to have to go through darkness to discover the light because the truth of who you are is in the light. Okay? And if you never live on this earth in the truth of who you are, you're going to be in poverty. You're going to be blind. See, what I hate about the devil, he knows how to blind people. People smile on their way to hell. People laugh on their way to hell. People clap their hands. I got money in my bank account. And they even say hallelujah in a false non-worship devotion to God worship. 
and right to hell. Just like an animal, there's a forest filled with fruit, but there's bear traps all around, so they're so excited, they're so thrilled, they're so happy. We got all this fruit, we got all this harvest, and they walk right into a bear trap, right into the grasp of the devil. Now, how many times do we do that in life because we don't have the direction? See, direction, I've learned, let's talk, uh, let's talk, uh, I love the experience that I have because I'm able to talk. I don't, so before, when I, when you lack an experience, you have to base your relativity, you have to base your authenticity, what's the word, authenticity, of what another man of God said, what another preacher said. So because you're unassured in the realm you walk with God, and it's okay, we all go through these stages. But when you become so assured and when you've been serving God for a while, when you've lived for the Lord and you no longer need to base your voice and what's authentic off any other man. And when you get to that point, you become a bulldozer in the spirit. You start to just rip through things. You start to just penetrate with focus. You start to just pierce through the clouds with your consciousness. You start to just walk through buildings like Jesus. You start to just walk through um, realms of revelation and partake of wisdom. And you begin to walk to the Father's table and you begin to eat his food. Right? Now... So I've had to go through a lot of unknown things. But what I love when I come here, God, see, God is a master interceptor. He will meet you accordingly. When I come here, God meets me. When I make it my duty, see, you got to have a singular focus. We talk about this. And what I mean by that is, like, if you look, if you want a new job, you can't start making all these excuses why you're not supposed to, you know, and, and this is something, this is a constraint of the mind, a confusion and a confliction and a, like a boxing match of the mind. You got to just purely, uh, a lot of times I would pray, but I wouldn't hit the target. Let's say if it's a, if it's lust, I would try to say, well, if I, my mind, in the, between my mind, instead of just praying, I command this fear to be broken, just purely praying what's going on, which enters into the actuality of what's going on, I would be, I would be like, well, I can't say that because that means I'm going to claim something negative What I shouldn't pray that. There's no hindrance in prayer. There's no, you step out of law when you pray. When you pray, you step out of law. So you ha if you're going through something, instead of, well, I shouldn't claim that I'm going through that. And I understand that. You have to pray. If you are afraid of roaches, you have to pray. I demand the spirit of fear of roaches to leave my body. I destroy you. I, and sometimes I just say this. I release the fire. I destroy you. I eliminate you. I break through. I break through. I break through. I break. And as I'm saying that in faith, power begins to circulate in the focus of what I'm speaking in my prayer. And it begins to spiritually break off me. But when I don't purely focus because my, my your mind likes to play tricks on you. Well, you can't pray against that because that means you're claiming that you're afraid of that. No, and I and I've had to go through this for years. So all I'm saying is, whatever it is, just simply, basically on a base kindergarten level, pray what it is. If you want more money, pray to God. I want you know how many times I wanted more money, but I was afraid to just simply because I wasn't because I wasn't because I didn't be honest with God because I didn't pray exactly purely what I wanted. It was like an alterated prayer with a serpent in it. I'm telling you. And it's so simple, yet so, see, life is so simple, yet so complex. When you begin to destroy and diminish the complexities of life and simplify life, you will come to this place where the Garden of Eden is. You will come to this place where the sapphire of Christ is. You will come to this place where the altar of the Holy One is. You will come to this place where all the flow of the Holy Spirit dwells. Okay? Because Satan knows how to take the flesh and magnify it. So in that magnification, it's like all the way up here. But in your humility and your surrender and your devotion to the word of God, when you begin, you get to a point where your taste, you only thirst for the oracle of God, the word of God. Because you know his voice, his word is life. So you can have a lot of possession, but be drained from life, from the oil of heaven, from the gladness of Jesus, from the potency and the beauty and the splendor and the majesty, your eyes not filled with crystals, your heart not filled with love, your broken down generator scarred and just wolves all around you, but you have much possession. So what do you really possess? Nothingness emptiness 
And so God will feel that. But you got to give and sacrifice. And you, I think the hardest, one of the harder things for me in my life, because you go through so much darkness, is just to simply trust and allow time to go through, God to go through. We always, as people, want to figure everything out. And I think one of the greatest burdens to humanity is we always try to figure out God. We have to know his exact timing. We have to know exactly when he's going to give us money. We have to know exactly when he's going to bring our wife. He, we have to know and we get fr If we can just trust and rest and allow the process and just simply go through it with a good attitude and just simply focus on growing every day of our life. If we could simplify these things and just do that, then we would have so much power, so much wealth, so much heavenly visitation, so much wealth, so much strength. And we would have more than us trying to imagine, figure out when it's going to happen. We would have more because we would have let go of the constraint of worry. We would have let go of the fear and burden of trying so hard. We would have let go. And when we let go, that's called surrender. And in surrender, there's clarity. There's the ocean. The ocean is always there. You're on the land. It doesn't matter how many Goliaths you fight, what the devil is saying, all the books the enemy has written against you. The ocean is there. And the ocean doesn't change. Who you are in Christ, the wealth that is yours, the life that has been given to you, doesn't change. But up here in the mind, we begin to believe the lies. And we step out of that ocean of existence, of harmony, of relativity, of the blessedness of God. Okay? I feel God's presence coming in like smallly, not bigly, just smallly, like a little opening. Because it's in the darkness of my mind and the unknown, I need you to hear what I'm saying. One thing I can't stand, yeah, let's keep going. You gotta, sometimes when you feel the darkest, when you don't know what's going on, you'll experience God in a way, if you can catch it, if you can, we're always trying to outwardly capture instead of inwardly catch the indwelling presence of God, the Holy of Holies, the sanctuary of life, the temple of God, it's within. When we begin to capture things from that place, see our vision from that place. We got to redefine what vision is. It isn't just, oh, well, I see a car. Is that really what you see? Because that car has an engine, it has paint, it has tinted windows, it has this, it was made by a manufacturer, it has a drive, it has history, it has um, an accumulation of miles, it has a destination, it has a gas tank, it has priorities, it has an alignment, it comes from the earth, it comes from, so, so, so what is vision? Okay. And the wholeness of it, the totalness of it. And so sometimes when I go through darkness, it is a time for me to reacquaint myself. It actually makes me search for God greater. Oh, I'm, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in. Now let me tell you. Come here. I need you to hear my voice. Hold on. Ah, I can see planes opening up. I can see angels. I can see angels coming in my life. Yeah, I have this a finance angel. This angel. So when I talk about it, I can feel the angel, and it freaking it's, it freaking makes me. Oh my god! The more I talk about this angel, the more. See, see. I can feel the presence of this angel. It's a finance. It's called. Oh, I can feel the angel touching my arm right now. And I have. so beautiful up in this car today I didn't I didn't you know you know and, and so I can feel this angel um 
the the whole car just lit up even brighter. I don't know if you see. There's there's an angel up in this thing. Now let me give you a secret on your angels. Angels long for you to speak about them. See, in the realm of give me information. But yeah, I have this angel called the finance angel. And this angel unlocked years ago based off revelation. And because of this revelation, I had access to claim this angel. But I didn't know about that because I didn't have, I wasn't matured in the things of God. I command my nose to be healed. But yeah, it's a very warming presence. But angels love it when you talk about them because in their vicinity, see, let's talk about, let's just use the example of energy. The more I talk about a certain angel, my words give that angel access. My words amplify that angel's energy. How do we know this? The more you, if I ain't learned nothing in my life, the name of Jesus is the most, let me, let me, God almighty, I, I wasn't, and the Lord's telling me right now, because you're on a level of maturity in my word, not in your own self-development transformation, which you've been doing a long time, but because you finally have devoted yourself to my voice and nothing else and me and see I got oh my gosh no 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 I, I can see you have scribe angels but you also have music angels and right now because God knows I see God says you were trying to acquire music in the physical realm but I can give you angels with sounds you've never heard before I can give I can assign them to you you're always trying to see God is so loving. He gets jealous and he gets jealous at me because a lot of times I'll try to search for God through a third party resource instead of just directly going to his throne and believing that he can give me the music without the iPad, the money without the bank account, the wife without the body. Like you have to get mm, Jesus, this. I don't know, man. I'm feeling. Oh, my God. I never I don't know if I felt God like this in a long time. I do. I just didn't realize it. I do, I just didn't realize it. But yeah. So, you know, there's a, a the Lord showing me right now. Like a lot of times, apostle, a preacher, whatever. Oh, Jesus Christ. This is better than drugs, money. You know, sex and marriage is only an outlet to experience the pleasure of heaven. You know, people get people think that sex. And I'm starting to experience this because I've been studying the Bible. There's no sex in heaven. There's no there's no marriage, but you become like the angels of God. You don't think you could reach an arc? See, people doubt. Oh man, I'm in I'm in the I'm like with God right now. And, and a, an apostle took me there today. See, the apostle. You don't honor your apostle like you should. I'm, I'm telling you right now, you don't. I don't, I don't care who's watching me. You don't honor your man of God like you should. Because you didn't know your man of God, it was God. And so when your man of God speaks to you, he takes your spirit and he lifts it higher. And it's God himself inside that vessel lifting you higher. You better learn, if, if you never learn how to live a lifestyle of honor, not low-level honor, but always rise in your understanding, your revelation, your visitation and knowledge of honor and move. See, this is why you don't rise in life. You don't move accordingly. You've learned about wisdom. You've learned about knowledge, but you keep it straight and you don't build off it and move according to the prophetic word. Move according to the visitation. Move according to the vision God gave you. You just have it and keep it and you keep it. And you might talk about it, which releases blessings, but you don't move. You haven't learned to move accordingly. There's a secret in the Bible. It's not for the strong man. It's not for the skill. This for that. This for that. But it, time and chance happens to all men. So time and chance. So when you know the timing of God and the movement of God, you'll understand the time and chance the Bible is talking about. And you'll be able to enter into these supernatural realms. Uh, the Lord showed me right now. He's giving me a revelation angel. So when I come here, purely focused on the oil of God's voice and the angel's going to come because the angel's going to see that I was obedient and I perceive angels look at what you possess when you're not obedient to God they're going to know and it's going to hinder them from moving in like I feel my ministry 
has come upon me. See, your ministry isn't a physical location. Yes, you'll get a building. Your ministry is the realm you carry. The ministry is the spirit of God you carry. You're, if you think your ministry is only a physical church or God's going to give me a church and I just want to... Man, I feel, I feel like... I don't even feel like I'm in heaven. I feel like I'm one with God right now. It's just like... It's so amazing. I need you to stay with me, please. Please don't leave. Now there is a... Oh, because I'm getting insane revelation. What's the battery looking like? I shouldn't even check the battery. Okay, we got plenty of time. Holy Spirit, let, let this battery supernaturally not burn out. We're going to talk about some of the most amazing things you ever heard in your life. You want to know why? Because Jesus is the most amazing being ever. He's God. He's the Alpha Omega. See, I got to speak. The Lord show me right now, okay? I got to speak the name of Jesus according to the word because the Bible says he is the word. But I say Jesus sometimes as a being outside of the word of God and in my mind limits the altar from connecting with my soul and spirit and the holy of holies in the triune godhead so it doesn't exfoliate so jesus was showing me you have to say my name according to my word if you can say my name according to my word you you, you will feel revelation my son child you know jesus withdraws himself from you he stays in you no matter what the holy spirit's in you but jesus is the master withdrawer and withdrawing doesn't mean he separates himself from you it doesn't mean he leaves you it means he withdraws a portion from you. He withdraws a measure and he'll cause you to seek so you, you can find him in the new location that he's just... See, I see Jesus in a room and he's like this, follow me. But when he says follow me, it's not just as simple as follow me. You have to hear his voice to catch his move and to follow him. In order for you to follow Jesus, you have to hear his voice. He said, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. They follow me. They will not be led astray. The reason why we're led astray is because we don't hear the voice of God. And so he'll tell you, come. But in your current situation, he'll withdraw himself. And you have to follow that because he's taking you to the place he wants to take you. But a lot of times we're in a certain place and we get so comfortable there. We get so set there. We get so, I feel there's a new level of period. Oh my gosh. My words are becoming so powerful. When I'm at my job, the moment I speak, the presence of God manifests. I've never used to feel it like this. The moment I, I can see what God is doing and I can hear his voice clearly. The moment I speak what he's showing me, it takes place in these people's lives. And I'm able to say one thing in a few moments and people are transformed for eternity. That's the power of the word of God. That's the power of Jesus. That's the power of the Lord. And now the fear of the Lord is coming in. Okay, let's keep going because, man, we're going to be here for probably 20 years. But I want to give you a secret. And the secret is hidden behind the veil. If you get the revelation, you'll see the secret and you'll know where to enter in. You'll know, not just this is more important. See... Somebody can, oh my gosh, I can feel God. I can feel oil just pouring out on me. I can feel the throne of, the throne of God, it's like oil now. And there's honey in this oil, and there's diamonds in this oil, and there's glory in it, and it's just pouring all over me. Okay. Yeah, but I have this, let's talk, let's keep talking about the angel. I have a financial angel that gives me physical money. The angel makes his identity unknown in a physical computer system and a physical identity, but makes himself known to me. And then I have this angel by the name of Cynthia. This angel is so simple. Like you'll be blown away. We're, we're always trying to be so powerful, but this angel is so simple. And if I don't enter in and see the wholeness of the power of God through the simplest touch of this angel, Oh, Jesus. See, God is a secret. I'm telling you, he is. But the Bible says, the Bible declares that God reveals his secrets to the righteous. He says, I, God is a secret, but I reveal myself to the righteous. Who are the righteous? Those that are in Christ Jesus. Oh, I ain't never felt like this. Okay. See the Lord, I can hear the voice of the Lord. I'm going to start walking in manifestation now. Because there's a certain maturity you have to reach for you to start walking in certain things. 
The reason why you ain't walking in certain things is not because God's postponing. It's not because you're stupid. It's not because you messed up. Stop thinking like that. That's a poverty. You know, you know how many of us have a poverty mentality? And as long as we have a poverty mentality, we're not going to walk in the money, the success that we're supposed to. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so he is. Your mind is the reality of what you are. And the reality of what you are is going to manifest the vision, the ideal of where you're supposed to go. And where you're supposed to go, if you don't... Oh, Jesus. I'm getting direct. So listen. I'm getting so much revelation right now. I can just take one little piece, one little nugget, and talk for the next hours off it. Because the Lord showed me, I'm going to give you... A revelation, a nugget. You can take that nugget and you can lead people to the ore, to the vein of it. And you can preach there for 30 days. You can make a subject about that. You can write a book on that. I'm going to give you that kind of power, my son. I'm going to walk. I'm going to give you that kind of glory because you have faithfully dedicated yourself to me because you have faithfully, because you have chosen to trust me. This is, this is why God's really rewarded me. You have chosen to persevere in me. Despite all the hell you done been through, you could have you could have just, you know, call quits. You could have just said, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going, man, I'm tired of this. I'm going to quit church and I'm just going to go just have sex with my wife, go get a girlfriend on Christian Mingle and, you know, uh, make godly excuses to live a poverty lifestyle and make God, you know, how we, you know how many times we make godly excuses to live outside of God's perseverance? Well, I'm just going to go to Christian Mingle and, and you know that's not God's will. But you make God your excuse and you make God your covering of sin. Do you know how evil that is? And this is wisdom, baby. Oh, we got wisdom. Oh, baby, don't you love wisdom? I tell people, talk, I'll, I'll be talking to my, people probably, at my job, I just start talking to things of God. And that has elevated me to a position. A lot of people are secret. When you get to the point, you don't care what nobody thinks about you. You don't care if your wife leaves you. You don't care because you, you trust and you know that. Listen, can, can we talk? Can we talk for a second? Come on. You know that what God has for you is better than any woman man you could choose on your own you know that what god has in store for you on this earth is better than any money you can make in your own imagination all the success you could make with your own hands you know that right you believe that right so you get to the point you don't care what nobody thinks i have family members deleted me off facebook i don't have many friends people don't even my best friends the devil has turned their heart towards me even the people that are cool, respect me, they listen to me talk about God. Satan has filled their heart with jealousy and envy towards me. Okay? They don't, they, 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 you know. So I see God leading me into this congregation, and it's so beautiful. My wife is there. There's nothing but holy reverence there. See, as you become more acquainted and more holified, see, holiness is tied to the depths of the realm of the closeness that you walk with God in because God is holy. He said, he said, I will have nothing to do with iniquity. Sin, basically what the Bible is telling, what he says in his Bible, sin shall be far from me. A liar shall not tarry in my sight. The truth will tarry in my sight. So when you're truthful and you're not truthful because you're honest. Well, 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 you're gay, you're stupid. No, 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 I'm just being honest, no. The truth is Jesus. When the marvelous light, the Bible to it. Mm, Jesus Christ, I need some help. Okay. Now listen. Oh, I feel, I feel my mind is rising. My soul is rising and so is yours. Yeah, I'm back. I need you to hear my voice. I don't like when the camera, I don't like when the, I don't like when the volume low. I don't, I can't stand when the volume, when I watch a video and the volume is not, I don't like that. Especially when we're talking about powerful stuff. So if I gotta, if I gotta put, if I gotta get, if you see my nose hairs for you to hear my voice, that's fine. But I got an important message from the throne. Every time we talk about God, there's an importance, there's a reverence, there's the fear of the Lord, there's a, there's a potency there, and there's something tremendous. There's oil and riches in the dwelling of the wise. So there's oil, there's change and transformation. Every time you watch a preacher, your human mind wants to tell you that. See, your human mind wants to tell you that's boring. Your human mind wants to tell you, man, this is lame. I want to watch a black preacher because I don't like white people. That's your human mind. But that man has been serving Jesus. That man has been serving the gospel of Jesus for 30, 40 years. You better listen to what he got to say. You go up in, you go up in his presence like you some big, bad gladiator. You better listen to what that brother got to say. Because he got knowledge. He got experience. He got expression. He got the fortitude and the fortified power of the Holy Ghost. He got the armor and the angelic ascension and the keepers of the scrolls on his side. 
but there is a seeming and a passage and an illusion and a barrier and a darkness. And you have to let the spirit. And sometimes for me to let the spirit flow, I have to feel dumb. I, God on purpose, I have to feel lame. I have to feel weak. Because at any moment in my flesh, if I start getting confident because of my human accolades, my human success, it will quench and hinder the pure flow of God. So when I start feeling weak and I start feeling that vulnerability, before I would try to escape it. But when I enter, and see, there are entrant points into the human soul. And one of them is vulnerability. You'll start feeling, God will make you, you'll start feeling really weird because the presence of God will come upon you. But according to your wisdom, will the presence of God advance you into the next stage of his presence and the dimension of what he's trying to show you in the now? Do you know every moment in your now, you can experience God in a supernatural way, but it comes through a collection of revelation. It comes through an experiential visitation realm. It comes through a continual word of God power. Now, I'm not talking about the anointing on the word, not just the word without the anointing. And as you get filled with that, as you devote your life to that, as you complete yourself in that, you begin to stay in a steadfast walk with God and you begin to stay experiencing the flow and you're able to articulate and your speech becomes the oracle of God because God will alter your mind, your attitude, your thought, your thinking, and he will mend it into his hand and he will crush it. He will crush it into his altar and he will all consuming fire. He will consume it and then it will begin to just it will be a flame that just burns in you. You don't need to analyze. You don't need to think. You don't need to even try to capacitate what your mind is trying to tell you and the information that you collected based off what you consider to be a devotion to the Holy Spirit. And so it'll just be a flame that burns in you, a fireplace. And when people come, they will sit in this fireplace and they will be consumed by God's power, even though they may not comprehend what is taking place because the Holy Spirit can be scary when you don't comprehend and know the Holy Ghost. But when it starts to burn, they're not going to be able to deny the change that took place. They're not going to be able to deny the spirit of lust is no longer in me. That spirit of perversion is no longer in me. That spirit of darkness has eliminated. Now I can see clearly. Now I understand the power. And even though they don't recognize it, you're there to lead them with your word, with your speech, with the voice of God. And so you know what the greatest thing in life is so far in my current state and level with Jesus? It's understanding. You don't understand because you say you understand. Understanding is a is the hand of God taking you into his understanding. Not because you have accumulated knowledge, although that is a piece. Understanding is when the hand of God takes you into his own understanding. And the understanding is in who he is. So when you be in his presence, Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God. When you stand in his presence, that's understanding. Because you're under that glory, under that weight, and you're standing in it. And I've learned that God's presence, his spirit, is so pure. If I don't reverence that purity, I won't enter to a greater level. If I don't do experience, again, one of the greatest things I'm loving in life, two things on my mind right now. Understanding and experience. Every day of your life, okay, you can get more money. Right, I've had many people offer me jobs. Make okay, I don't want to talk, but 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 let's talk. Let's focus understanding and experience. Focus on, if you want money, if you want success, if you want riches and the spirit. Under, under focus on understanding and experience. Every day of your life, you get to grow in understanding and experience. These are two realms of God that will unlock the windows of heaven. And when you learn, see. Anybody can sow to reap. Well, I want to sow and I declare in the name of Jesus. That's good. But when you get to the point where you just want to sow, you're not even worried about a return. You're not even worried about a reward. You just want to sow because of your delight for God, because of you, you've you unlocked. I was reading my Bible earlier and it was just powerful. You know, I'm fasting. I'm reading the word of God and I'm just, I'm growing in my spirituality and I'm just growing and I'm just to, to, to behold this and to come here and share what I behold, it's like the hand of God does this in my life. But my understanding is at a whole other level now. And I'm starting to get, I'm talking about forget worldly locations. Before my mind would, my success in Christ, I would, my mind would base it off worldly locations. Well, I still live here and, and, but God had to diminish that. And through this understanding, and you know, every time I come here, a fresh power comes upon me. 
And so I'll start talking and I don't really know, haven't really saturated myself in it. Haven't really, you know, I feel the Holy Ghost. Um, one thing that changed my life is pondering. I was in my bedroom earlier just pondering. Just sitting there in a concentrated state of being, pondering God. You have to learn to sit in a concentrated state of being. I need you to hear my voice. I need you to hear what I'm saying, okay? I'll give you money to hear what I'm saying. I will pay people to hear what I'm saying because I know that I have the word of God inside of me. And I know that by you receiving it, I just got paid by God. See, I like getting paid too. You should, I love getting paid. I See, I love the money of Jesus. I, I don't love, see, I don't love earthly, but I love the wealth of Jesus. So when somebody receives, see, I can talk all day, but if a person doesn't receive, I don't, I don't like it. But I found a way to make people receive. I found a way to cause people to receive through many tactics, through many Holy Spirit, divine strategy. You know what? Tactic and divine strategy combined into the charist, to the character that you've developed in the Lord. That is a powerful trien, triune, pyramid type power that you've unlocked. Okay, I need you to hear what I'm saying. Let me drink my drink. Praise God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Now I've been praying in the spirit heavily. Heaviness turns into heavenliness. The weights and burdens you feel turn into lightness. Your mind becomes light. Your life becomes light. Your money becomes light. And when it becomes light, you walk in the shine, the flow of that light, the traveling power of that light, the vicinity of light, the dexterity of that light, and the demonstration of that light. And it's just this pure substance that flows into oil, caverns, darkness, and it interprets, it, it builds, it gathers, and it mends. So the collection of my words on this channel, when I speak the truth of the scripture, of the Holy Ghost, not just the Bible, the actual rhema of God, okay? When I speak that, it's it creates, it builds, it creates atmospheres, it builds loyalty, it diminishes principalities, it shut down the evil wind of Satan, it causes forth people to go forth into the destiny that God, it causes forth healing. You know, a lot of times God will give you a blessing and make you sacrifice it, and you have to take the pain for that person, and you have to go through the suffering when you just got the greatest blessing. A lot of times it will feel like the greatest curse, and there, you have to have wisdom. You have to have wisdom. You have to have wisdom to begin to circulate this. You have to have wisdom to begin to, even, you matter of fact, for you to even be able to trust, truly trust in the Lord, you got to have the wisdom of God to even be able to truly trust him. You can, you can buy faith. Faith is one of the lower levels. We think it's the highest level. And you can tell because Jesus said if you had faith as a mustard seed, he's basing, he's basing the highest level of God off the lowest seed. So faith is one of the lower levels. You think faith is the highest level? No. God himself is the highest level. Okay? So faith is just the entrance to that infinite God, okay? If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you enter into all of God, okay? Now, it's when you explore that. It's when you're not afraid to... See, most people are afraid to speak what they experience, speak what they explore. And they say, well, I just got to speak the word of God. But the word of God wants to reveal itself. The word of God wants to express itself. The rhema in the scripture wants to express itself. And because you're not, a, because you're afraid to talk about the vision you had, what the Holy, see, the Holy Spirit is an emotional being. You can literally be led by the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can literally speak the oracles of God by the emotion of the spirit. And there, it is, it is a generator of the voice of God. This, uh, all right, now we're getting deeper. Now we're getting deeper. Hallelujah. Mm, I feel, I see, I can see trains and towers coming to me right now. From the, man, 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 man. Man, let me tell you something. When, when I watch men of God, when they talk about the vision they had, I enter into that vision and I get my, this is the, this is the beauty of Jesus. I get my own diamond, my datum, my interpretation. So when you listen, and this is wisdom, when you listen to somebody else that had a vision, you enter into that vision and get your own revelation of it. That's why you should always be speaking fresh revelations. But the reason why we seem to stray, that I've strayed in my life, because I haven't quite learned, I haven't, didn't quite learn to stay in that holy place. Stay dwelling in God. 
And it takes commitment, it takes practice, it takes years, it takes devotion. But most importantly, if I were to give you a simple answer on how to do that, it takes just completely giving your life to the voice of God. His spirit and the enemy gonna fight. See, the devil's not stupid. He under, he knows that, wait a minute, he is entering into a place. And he knows this not because he has the wisdom of the light of God, but by the damage you do to his kingdom. See, the devil knows your name based off the damage you do. And demons understand, they know you based off the power you walk with. So, oh Jesus. That's how they know. And so they can't really get in your vicinity because you're covered by Jesus. But they will, they will, what they, this is how they study you. This is how demonic power study you. They'll see your exploits. They'll see how you, see higher principalities are fearful, fearful of you. So they'll send weaker demons to get stomped by you just to get intel. <laughs> see that you don't want, I promise you, you don't want Satan and you don't want the ways of this world. If you, if you only understood the demonic kingdom a little bit, you would hate Satan because these spirits hate each other. They don't have love. So they're constantly diminishing you. So anytime Jezebel is in effect, anytime a demon is in effect in your life, they'll use your love against you. They'll use your good emotions towards each other, but they're all about destroying you. They destroy each other. So these greater principalities, they're afraid of you because they know you know who you are and they know you know you have power over them. See, when you know by experience, you have power over the devil. You know, it cre it creates a divine stronghold. And the very thought process Satan directs towards you, the very images he tries to emulate against you don't have an effect. And actually, it backfires on him. Because your declaration, so you got to keep declaring... Oh, I learned something new about God. I keep learning new things about God and I'm so excited to be, I'm, I love God because he don't give up on you. I done been through hell in my life. I done been through darkness, but I've gotten to a point, it don't phase me anymore. Or at the level, I, at the level I'm at, it don't, it don't phase me no more. Intensity has turned into simplicity. The darkness has turned, David said, God shall enlighten my darkness. God shall enlighten my darkness. God shall enlighten my darkness. You keep, no, 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 no. Okay. Okay, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. And thank God that I got to come here today. This is my favorite. I, I really believe this is my favorite time of the week. I'm starting to get tired of being, how do I say this? Like, this is my prayer today. And this is what I'm asking the Lord for you, for me. Take us to a place where there is godly, godly, godly virtue. Take us to a new place, Father. A new place, Father. Where the abundance of the collection, of the recollection, of all the storehouse of our memory awakens there. Churches are opening up for us. God is opening up for us. See, this is one, I believe this is one of the hardest things for a believer. God will keep you in a place as long as he has to keep you. And he will prepare you in that place. He will ordain you in that place. He will, you might be living with your mama at the age of 30. You might be living with your grand, you might have just... I know people that are 40 years old had a bunch of money, but now it's all gone. Now they move back in with their parents. They feel bad. But if you can just understand that God will put you in a place to break you, to crush you, to get you to see him, to get your soul right, please don't rush out of that place. You know, years ago, I, would, I tried to rush out of everything. And that was absolute, the opposite of wisdom. It was foolishness. And it... And if God, you know what the Lord did? He always brought me back to the place he wanted me to be. Do you know how many times I tried to leave my house? Over 17, 20 times. I ended up in the woods. I ended up in the streets. Lost clarity. Lost my confidence. But it seemed so good. Because the devil don't want you in the place God wants you to be. But when you're in the place God wants you to be, you'll know. By the, see, 
not by not by suffering alone, but by the warfare you go through. But by the blessing you get, by the breakthrough you get. See, if you're in a place where the revelation just flows to you so easily, and you're getting all these dynamics of Jesus, you're getting all these kingdom downloads, you're in the right place. But when you step out of that place, it's like you can't hear God's voice, you're going crazy. See, I did something, and it has initiated an awakening. This devil tried to draw the person of my destiny out of the will and confuse her. But the Holy Spirit told me your embrace and your word, but more importantly, your devotion to me and not to that person. See, you have lost and strayed in your devotion, but it has been allowed for you to experience the stronghold that has occurred upon this vessel's life. Now you bring it back to me and a greater devotion because when you have lost a thing, you have a greater value for a thing. Oh, Jesus, we talk in God now. I've located the oracle. The mystery is in the oracle. When you have located the oracle of God by direct impartation from the hand of God through the prophet, through the apostle of God. See, let, ooh, I'm feeling that. Okay, now we're getting deeper. Let's go. Let's go. Now we're getting deeper. Now we're going somewhere. I want to thank you, Lord, for this channel you've given me. I want to thank you, Lord. That a prayer is awakening. I want to thank you, Lord, that a praise is an awakening. I want to thank you, Lord, that a new, ooh, and I be, the reward spirit has increased in me. And I want to thank you, Lord. I tell people what's actually taking place in the realm of the spirit at my job. Because they have trusted in me. They have trusted in the God I serve. Because they have honored me, they have honored the God that I serve. Because they have heeded unto my voice, they have heeded unto the voice of God. Therefore, they will shine forever. Now, the acceleration is according to the hand and the labor that I put to those vessels. You know what I'm saying? When you think, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm in Santandi. In that place where the river flows. In that place where the Jesus grows. In that place. We're in, I feel like we're in a place right now. I can see the grass. I can see green emeralds. I can see Jesus smiling. You know, Jesus is such a simplified being. You don't experience Jesus because you try to complex the Godhead. Jesus is a simplified being. He is the whole authority and power and invisible image of God. And the most... See... Oh, Jesus. Okay, now I feel the Spirit of God on my brain. The Spirit of God is on your brain. You're going to start getting the calculation of this thing. Listen, listen, you see the interpretation. It's for the calculation. Now, the calculation is the calcium in the spirit. You know how you have iron, calcium, the hydrogen tables of time and periods and essence and power. Well, these are the keepers. And oh, we about to get spiritual. You don't want me to get spiritual, brother, because I got I got Jesus. Oh, I feel good. See, 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 see. It wasn't a matter, this is, okay, now the Lord is, I'm getting delivered right now. Listen, it wasn't a matter of, mm, remember he took, he took them through the wilderness, right? Listen, listen, okay, I'm getting revelation right now. The Bible says, God took them, listen, listen, this is, this is, you about to, you about to get it right now. You know, my other videos are good, but we starting to get better. I want you to know something. I can, you know how, I feel the Holy Ghost in my brain, brother. Jesus, stopping on my enemies. Jesus. Vanquish all my enemies. G Ooh, I feel so okay. Listen, listen, listen. Now we're getting now. I'm, now I'm see. I was getting revelation out, but that's not where I wanted to be because I already possess that revelation that I have released unto you. But the place. No, 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 no. Now there is a there is a there was an open heaven. Oh my gosh! I've been sowing seeds. I've been sowing. I told God. I've been sowing all kind of seeds, and I'm getting all kind of breakthrough. If you want to walk in the supernatural, learn how to use your money and sow into the kingdom of God. I just got, somebody just sold a 30, somebody just gave me, I got over, I got a bunch of tips at work. Somebody, there's this, I have an angel, oh Jesus, that gives me money. Oh Jesus. I have an angelic being that, see now we're talking in the ex actuality. See, when you don't talk in the actuality, in the presence of God, what the Spirit of God is showing you, you're not, it doesn't really, see, there is an accurate power in Jesus. Oh, we're about to get gangster. And when you speak, 
to the accurate power in the position of accuracy. You ever wonder why he laid out? Okay. Now I'm getting revelation about the tablets, the commandments. Moses, I'm getting revelation right now. Oh, Jesus. I can see the Bible right now. Listen, I, I ain't never felt like this before. I ain't never felt that, I ain't never felt like this in the spirit. I'm, I'm seeing. Okay, listen, listen. Stay with me. Stay. We on a ride right now. We on a roller coaster with the Jesus. The devil tried to make me ashamed of the name of Jesus. So the, and God allowed the enemy to influence an infrastructure of darkness. But he allowed it because it moved me out of the wilderness into my actual ministry. Oh, Jesus, now I know my actual ministry is to chase, not perseverance, not growth. See, and I, oh, gee, it, if I wouldn't have sowed these seeds, I wouldn't be where I'm at right now. The day you learn how to give your money into the kingdom of God is the day you're going to be a millionaire. Is the day, and the day you learn how to give your money and sow, sow your money, you're going to reap. Most people don't give. They just, they just tithe. Okay? And they only tithe based off not even a revelation from the Holy Spirit. They tithe because it's a good human thing to do. If you're only living by good human things to do and not the move of God. No, 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 no. Oh, Jesus. I'm about to go off in the... I'm about to go... Hey, see, when you walk in this realm, the devil don't even exist in this realm. You have to understand, does Satan... I don't even need to explain that. I'm trying to explain myself. Now, listen. The devil don't exist in this realm. Only third heaven activity takes place in this realm. Okay? The third heaven. So, right. So, every time I fasted, I went to the third heaven. But there were many times when I fasted. Oh, Jesus. I'm about to make... I'm about to go off. I got too much in. Okay. Okay, Jesus. Now, I'm feeling the... Spirit. I'm feeling all this. I can see streams of energy just surging inside. Flowing in me, but then... Flowing in me so gently, but surging in me so strongly. And this Jezebel, because I'm, oh my God. Like, I, I just got, okay, I just got like five revelations and I just got like scrolls. See, and um, I, we can talk for hours now. We're going to be here for a long time tonight. Yeah, I'm sorry. I know you got school in the morning. I know your kids got, I know you got to take your kids. I know you got a date with this sexy girl tomorrow. You know, I got a, I got a wife coming to me and I already, and she's, I can feel it and I've, I've been, I've had to fight to get her. The, the, the Lord told me, this is my daughter. Now, I've given her unto you, but you're going to have to win her. <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right. See, to hear these words could seem foolish to you, but to feel what I feel in this moment, brother, you would give up smoking right now. I don't care if you've been addicted to crack 30 years, it would break right now. It breaks right now if you feel what I feel. A lot of times we listen and it seems foolish, but if you felt what the brother was feeling in the Holy Ghost. See, see, I don't care what you're going through. What, hey, let me tell you something. If you're watching me, whatever you're going through right now, I break it off your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm getting beat up by the Holy Ghost right now. I can't even sit still. Let me tell you something. When you experience this, you it's going to be... It's going to be easy for you to put cocaine down. It's you, 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 I tell my brothers all the time, how did I give up drugs? How, well, how have I not done drugs in almost seven years? Because I'm on a, a high I've never experienced before. How in the world have I not had sex in almost six years? Because I've tasted a holy... See, if... Okay. I'm going to tell you something right now. There was a breakthrough in the spirit. There was a breakthrough in the spirit that has taken place. I'm talking about there was a there was a massive breakthrough, not just a baby breakthrough. And I can feel it. I can see it. I can taste it. And it's igniting and God is moving. It's not. See, God can sit on his throne and hear your prayer. But there's a difference when you know what to do to make God move from his throne. It's a difference. And you have to have the wisdom because if you don't and God tries to go against you not having the wisdom and entering outside of your carnal mind, he has just defiled himself in unholiness. He can See, we get mad because we don't understand God. It might take you 10 years to start to truly understand God. But I'd rather, I rather it, I've been fasting. I've been giving my soul to Jesus. I've been giving all my money. I've been just just trusting in him with everything. And I'm, and, and I'm telling you, 
it might take you five years. It, you might have to go through. You, it might take you seven years to finally begin to understand the things of God. But once you do, Now, let's continue. I've been sowing seeds. When, when you learn how to use your money and sacrifice. But this is the secret. All right, now, I feel, now I feel the Holy Spirit calming me down. And now we're going to release what just happened. I, I don't know what just happened, but brother... I just got a, the biggest breakthrough in my life. That's all I, I see money coming. My wife, I see my church. I see mansions. I see, I see a bunch of angels. I see God. I see the throne. I see my life. I see myself being established in such a realm of authority and power and revelation and visitation that nobody has ever seen before. I see myself in a kingdom dynamic and an assembly of angelic hierarchies and all the systems of heaven being implemented in me because God has trusted me through the dedication and sacrifice and giving of myself. And he, now I see the reward of God. But you know, God himself, 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 interpreting inside myself in the oneness of truth in Christ and I see myself understanding God's word because I've been praying for it I've been I've been when you stop see oh Jesus that's what you, you, you just you know, you know, the Lord told me, the Lord was teaching me about how to worship, how to pray. Just because you say hallelujah, hallelujah, that's okay. But it is an intent true worship is an intentional realm. Anybody can say hallelujah, Jesus, and that's good. God will, God will bless you. He's a good God. But it's an intentional realm. True worship, inward worship, inward praise. It's not just saying hallelujah. It's not even just saying the name of Jesus. It, it, it's, an in, it's an intentional inward realm of, that, 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 of sacrifice, of death to self, of, of agony, of crucifixion. Of, that's praise. You went through all this darkness and you could have, this is why God's reward, I can hear the voice of God really clear. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have an angel that gives me physical money. Not, mm. oh, Jesus Christ. Well, holy uh, Lamb of God. What are we gonna title this? See, now I can hear the voice of God in my solar plex. Before I would try to catch his voice in my human mind. Now I can, when I ask, see, I read my Bible. And I've gotten to a point where I ask God before I would, I would ask Jesus Christ. Whoever watching this video, you about to get rewarded. You, 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 I see, I see tanks, guns, armies that cannot stand against me. I don't even have to speak. You know how I love in the Bible how it said Moses just lifted his hands because he walked in the realm of God. When he just lifted his hands, it caused heaven to rise. And so if it said if he just lifted his hands, they was going to win the battle. So we're going to walk in that power because Jesus said, great. Ooh, until, see, now I'm, now. Okay, okay, I'm coming now. Now we're getting there. See, this is what I wanted. You know, I come here, I talk about revelation, I give wisdom, but that's not what... That's that's what I got, but I wanna get what I don't got. I wanna I wanna I want to soar over that ego. Then I wanna stomp on that. I wanna come. Okay. Yeah. So, so you know Moses, he lifted up his hands, right? So you get to a power. There's tanks on the. I see it. Look, I, my spirit is open. Now, when I was at my job earlier, you know, because I don't eat and my spirit is intense, but I saw this opening in my spirit, like. I ain't gonna drop my phone. I saw this opening in my spirit and it was more wide than it was ever been. Now what what I'm what that meant was, baby, you about to receive from your father. My spirit was oh see, I don't know if I want to say that. That's some deep stuff right there. I got I, I need to know. I need I got a question to God. Does God ever get bored? Well, the Bible makes it clear he gets tired, he hates evil. He has, he, 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 so I believe God is tired of average preaching. I believe God is looking for a man or woman that is no longer satisfied with just Sunday preaching. But they so hungry. See, hunger has levels. There was a dimension of hunger called desperation. 